found out my wife's girl's trip was actually a romantic getaway with her affair partner. They're both surprised when I reached at the resort with divorce papers. I'm dealing with one of the worst situations of my life, discovering that my marriage has been nothing but lies. For the past few months, I've been reading through relationship subreddits, trying to spot any warning signs of a failing marriage. That constant reading made me more aware of small changes in behavior, which helped me figure out what was happening. My wife wasn't who I thought she was, and I was blind to it for years. I used to think our relationship was special and different from others, but now I realize I was just being naive about the whole thing. I've been married to Rose for almost six years now. We had this really interesting meeting at Best Buy when I was picking parts for a custom PC build. She came up to me while looking lost in the monitor section, probably because I had about five different spec sheets spread out in front of me. We clicked right away over our shared interest in technology. She was building her first gaming setup, and I helped her pick out the perfect monitor for her needs. We ended up getting coffee after, and she told me about her job as a software developer. I was working in IT at the time, so we had plenty to talk about. Our relationship moved pretty quickly after that initial meeting. We dated for three years, during which we moved in together and adopted a cat. I proposed during a weekend trip to Seattle, where we were attending a gaming convention. The wedding was perfect, small and intimate, just how we wanted it. Now looking back at all those memories, it feels like I was living in a fantasy world where everything seemed perfect but wasn't real at all. Rose has these two close friends, Sophia and Lisa, who she's known since college. The three of them are inseparable, they have weekly video calls, go on trips together, and celebrate all major life events as a group. I got to know them pretty well over the years, and we developed a friendly relationship. While I wouldn't consider them my closest friends, we get along great at social gatherings and occasionally hang out as couples since they're both married too. They've been there for all our important moments, from our engagement party to our housewarming. The first red flag appeared when I came home early from work one day and found Rose on a call with Sophia and Lisa. She was sitting in our home office, but as soon as I walked in, she completely changed her tone and body language. It wasn't like her usual casual conversations with them, she got all weird and started speaking in this forced, casual way. I tried to joke about what they were discussing, but she brushed it off with some vague answer about weekend plans. The whole interaction felt off, especially since she's usually super open about her conversations with them. I decided to hang around near the office door after leaving the room, mostly because her behavior was so unusual. I could hear her whispering, which was strange since she's usually loud and animated when talking to her friends. They were discussing some trip, and there were multiple mentions of he and him in the conversation. I knew about their planned girl's trip to Cabo, but the way they were talking about it seemed really suspicious. The secretive tone and the mention of some guy didn't add up with what I knew about their vacation plans. Rose had mentioned this upcoming Cabo trip with her friends a few weeks ago. It seemed normal enough, they try to do a big trip together every year, like their weekend in Vegas last summer and their ski trip to Colorado the year before. I thought about joining them since I had some vacation days saved up, but Rose seemed hesitant when I brought it up. She said something about keeping their tradition of girls-only trips, and I didn't push it. My work schedule was packed anyway with a big server migration project that would keep me busy. After she got off the phone, her behavior changed completely. She came up behind me while I was working, hugging me and being extra affectionate. We've always been close, but this felt different, like she was overcompensating for something. It reminded me of how things were right after we had that rough patch last year when she was spending too much time at work with her new project team. She would stay late at the office and then come home being super attentive, almost like she felt guilty about something. I've checked her phone before when things felt off, like during that work project phase when she was getting texts at odd hours. Nothing came up then, but this time felt different. We share our phone passwords, it started when we needed to access each other's phones for emergency contacts and just never changed. Over nine years together, you develop a sense of when something isn't right, and this definitely wasn't right. I waited until she was in the shower and went through her messages with Sophia and Lisa. Instead of their usual group chat full of memes and complaints about their husbands, they were talking about her trip, not their trip. The messages were full of excited emojis and comments like he's going to love that new bikini and make sure to take lots of pictures for us. They were acting like teenagers planning a secret date, not three married women in their 30s. The more I scrolled through their chat, the worse it got. Mixed in with their normal conversations about work and family were these secretive messages about someone named Evan. Then I saw the photos, a guy who looked like he walked straight out of a dating app profile, posing by some lake without a shirt. There was another picture of him with his arm around my wife at what looked like a restaurant. The timestamp showed it was from just two weeks ago, when Rose said she was having dinner with her work friends. His name was Evan, 
and somehow this guy had been part of my wife's life without me knowing anything about him. The chat was full of her friends commenting on how good they looked together and how excited they were about the Cabo trip. Sophia even wrote you two are going to have the best time with about 20 heart emojis. The Sophia who was at our house last weekend for dinner, acting completely normal while knowing my wife was planning a trip with another man. Both Lisa and Sophia, were actively encouraging this whole thing. Finding out your wife is planning a romantic getaway with another man hits different than just suspecting an affair. The messages showed they had booked connecting rooms at some fancy resort in Cabo. They were planning dinners at expensive restaurants and scheduling couples massages. The whole thing was in their chat, complete with little heart emojis and excited messages about spending time together. I couldn't read any more. I put her phone back, grabbed my keys, and drove around the neighborhood for an hour, trying to process everything. When I got home, Rose was worried about where I'd gone. She kept asking if something was wrong at work, since I never just leave without saying anything. I made up some story about needing to clear my head after a stressful call with a client. We even sat down to watch TV together, and she cuddled up next to me like nothing was wrong. Meanwhile, I was looking through divorce laws on my phone. I know I had to end things, but just walking away felt too easy. She would just move on with Evan, probably even move him into our house eventually. I started digging online, trying to find out who this Evan guy was. With his first name and the city they met in, I figured I could find something through social media. I needed to know who this person was that my wife chose over our marriage. But more than that, I needed to do something that would make them both realize they couldn't just walk away from this without consequences. The betrayal wasn't just from Rose, it was from her friends too, who sat at my dinner table and laughed at my jokes while helping plan this trip. Edit, someone here suggested showing up at their romantic getaway. At first, it seemed crazy, spending thousands on last-minute flights and hotels just to confront them. But the more I thought about it, the more it made sense. I had all their reservation details from the chat. I could show up with divorce papers and catch them together. It would cost a lot, especially with divorce lawyer fees coming up, but seeing their faces when I walked up to them at that resort would be worth every penny. Update 1, looking back at these past two weeks, my life has turned into something straight out of those revenge movies I used to think were unrealistic. The whole situation started when I discovered my wife was planning a romantic Cabo getaway with her affair partner while pretending it was a girl's trip. Many people on Reddit warned me that these girls' trips were often covers for something else which is what I found out in my original post, but I never thought Rose would do this. We were also talking about starting a family next year. But I kept everything normal at home, not letting on that I knew about her plans. We had dinner together every night, watched our usual TV shows, and I even helped her pack for the trip. She kept talking about how much fun she'd have with Sophia and Lisa, showing me their group chat messages about spa appointments and beach activities. The whole time, I was working with a divorce lawyer and booking my own flight to Cabo. The lawyer and I spent hours getting the divorce papers ready, making sure everything was properly documented. He even suggested recording any confrontation for evidence. The last minute plane ticket cost nearly as much as our entire honeymoon, but I didn't care. I used some of our emergency savings, seemed appropriate since this was definitely an emergency. I even booked a room at the same resort, though thankfully not on her floor. The morning of her flight, I drove her to the airport like any supportive husband would. I watched her walk through security with her new beach clothes and that expensive sun hat I had bought her for her birthday. I looked for Evan in the terminal but didn't spot him. He was probably on a different flight to avoid suspicion. While I was waiting for my evening flight, Rose kept sending me updates. She texted pictures of her ocean view room and the resort's infinity pool, talking about how much she missed me already. Each message just made me more certain about my plan. I packed light, just a backpack with the divorce papers, some clothes, and my phone to record everything. After checking into the resort that night, I barely slept. I kept thinking about all our years together, how we met at that electronic store, our first apartment with the broken AC, all leading up to this moment. The divorce papers were in my backpack. My lawyer had highlighted where she needed to sign, and we'd gone over every detail to make sure nothing could be contested. He'd even added documentation about the trip expenses and how they were used to facilitate the affair. The whole thing was ready to go, all that was left was to find them together and make sure she couldn't deny what she'd done. The next morning, I texted Rose casually asking about her plans. She sent back a poolside selfie and mentioned she'd be sunbathing before exploring the town with the girls later. Her message included details about which pool she was at, the main one near the lobby with the swim-up bar. That was all I needed. I got dressed, put the divorce papers in my bag, and headed down there. I spotted them right away at the far end of the pool deck. Rose was stretched out on a lounger in that new blue bikini, 
supposedly for her girl's trip. Next to her was Evan, as he casually rubbed sunscreen on her legs. They looked completely comfortable together, like they'd done this many times before. I thought about all the time she said she was working late or meeting her friends, wondering if she was really with him. I started recording on my phone and slipped it into my shirt pocket, my lawyer had emphasized getting evidence if possible. Standing behind them felt surreal, Evan glanced up at me but didn't seem concerned, probably thinking I was just another hotel guest. He kept talking to Rose about their dinner plans for that evening, completely oblivious. She had her eyes closed, sunglasses on, enjoying the attention from her affair partner while her husband was supposedly back home working. Evan finally looked up again and asked if he could help me, sounding annoyed at the interruption. That's when Rose finally noticed me. She sat up so fast she knocked over her drink, rubbed her eyes like she was seeing things, and then just stared at me with her mouth open. Her reaction told me everything, she never expected me to find out, let alone show up here. The weeks of lying, the secret planning, her friends covering for her, it was all about to blow up in her face. I pulled out the manila envelope and held it out to Rose. She took it, probably already guessing what was inside. We just signed refinancing papers for our house last month, so she knew what legal documents looked like. Evan stood up, puffing out his chest like he was ready for a fight. I'd seen his type before at the gym, guys who think they can intimidate their way out of any situation. He was a bit taller than me. Evan put his hand on my chest and tried pushing me back, acting tough in front of Rose. She tried pulling him away, probably remembering how I knocked some sense onto a drunk guy who got aggressive with her a few weeks ago. But Evan wasn't backing down, he kept his hand on my chest and started talking about how I needed to leave them alone. The whole situation was ridiculous, this guy was telling me to leave while he was on a romantic vacation with my wife. The next few seconds happened fast, his push got more aggressive, and I reacted by shoving him hard. He stumbled backward over a lounge chair and fell straight into the pool. I couldn't help laughing at the sight of him splashing into the water. Some people around the pool started recording on their phones, probably thinking this would make a good social media post. Rose was freaking out, she tried the classic it's not what it looks like line, which was pretty absurd considering she was in a bikini with another man at a couple's resort. I asked her about Sophia and Lisa, knowing full well they were probably at work back home. She opened the envelope just enough to see the divorce papers, then quickly closed it like that would make them disappear. The tears started immediately, not the quiet crying from when her dad was sick, but full sobbing that drew even more attention from other guests. Evan was climbing out of the pool now, looking like a wet angry cat. He was clearly ready to fight, but some guys from the nearby cabana area stepped between us. One of them mentioned hotel security was coming, which was my cue to leave. I turned and walked away from the pool area, not looking back at the scene I'd just caused. Rose tried following me, still holding the divorce papers, but stopped when I looked at her. Back in my room, I quickly packed my backpack. The front desk staff seemed concerned when I checked out early, probably having heard about the pool incident, but they called a taxi for me anyway. The whole thing took less than 30 minutes, I was there and gone like a hurricane. I spent six hours at the airport, sitting at an overpriced bar near my gate. The bartender kept the coffee coming while I watched the video I'd recorded over and over. There they were in crystal clear quality, my wife with another man at a resort we couldn't afford on our joint income. The timestamp would be perfect for the divorce proceedings. The whole trip cost me nearly $3,000 between the flight, hotel, and airport expenses, but seeing their faces and having that video evidence was worth every penny. That night back home, I turned off my phone and had the best sleep since discovering her texts. Rose showed up at our house two days later, still wearing her beach clothes and looking like she hadn't slept. She started crying and saying she could explain everything, that Evan was just a friend from work, that nothing serious had happened between them. The same excuses she used when I questioned her about staying late at the office for team meetings. I told her to pack her things and go to her sister's place. Her sister had always given me weird looks at family gatherings, like she knew something I didn't. Now I understood why. No calls or texts from Rose in the past few days. She's probably finally realized there's no fixing this. Her friends haven't reached out either, I guess they know their part in this mess. I changed the locks yesterday and moved all her plants from the backyard to the garage. Update 2. After months of stress and legal battles, I can finally say this chapter of my life is over. The divorce is finalized, and I'm starting to feel like myself again. Finding out about Rose's affair destroyed the image I had of our perfect marriage. But at least now I know the truth, and I got to watch her perfect little plan fall apart at that resort. The video of Evan falling into the pool has become a favorite among my friends, though I keep telling them to stop sharing it. Rose waited a week after the Cabo incident before reaching out. 
she sent a long text about needing space to think things through, like she was the one who needed time to process everything. During that week, her sister even tried calling me to explain how Rose was going through something and needed understanding. The betrayal went deeper than just Rose. Her entire friend group knew about Evan and encouraged their relationship. Sophia and Lisa, who had been bridesmaids at our wedding, helped plan their romantic getaway. The divorce was inevitable, there was no coming back from that level of deception. Especially not after I saw them together at that resort, acting like teenagers in love while I was supposed to be working overtime to pay for our new roof. Our divorce lawyer was a real professional who knew exactly how to handle everything. The video from the resort was solid evidence, showing Rose clearly with another man on what was supposed to be a girl's trip. We also had screenshots from her group chat discussing their plans and several suspicious bank transactions. The lawyer particularly focused on a series of unexplained Uber rides to areas of town where Rose had no reason to be, and restaurant charges that were too high for just one person. There was even a hotel booking from three months ago when she claimed to be at a work conference. Going through our financial records was like uncovering a whole secret life. We found charges for expensive lingerie stores on days she told me she was shopping for work clothes. There were coffee shop bills in parts of town near Evan's office, and various other small expenses that started painting a clear picture. The most damning was a receipt from a jewelry store, she had bought him a watch for his birthday while telling me she was picking up a gift for her dad. Every discovery just reinforced that ending the marriage was the right decision. The final settlement worked out heavily in my favor. Rose's lawyer initially pushed for half of everything but backed down quickly when we presented all the evidence of her affair expenses. They settled for me keeping the house and my car, while she got 30% of our savings, much less than she would have received normally. The judge wasn't impressed by how she'd used our joint funds to finance her affair, especially the Cabo trip. I even got to keep our dog Robin, who I didn't think needed to be mentioned before, which was a huge relief since I'm the one who always walked him and took him to the vet anyway. Rose's family started calling as soon as word got out about the divorce. Her parents, who had treated me like a son for the past nine years, were shocked when I told them everything. Her father, who had always bragged about how I was the perfect match for his daughter, went completely silent on the phone. Her mother, who used to invite me over every Sunday for dinner, kept asking if I was sure about what I'd seen. I explained about the Cabo incident, showed them the video, and detailed all the lies their daughter had told. Now they were learning their daughter had thrown it all away for an affair. The investigation into Evan's identity led me down an interesting path. A quick search through Rose's Facebook friends revealed that he was a regional sales manager at a competing tech company, married with two kids. His profile was full of family photos, beach vacations, little league games, anniversary dinners. His wife looked like someone from a lifestyle magazine, and their house seemed perfect with its white picket fence and manicured lawn. The whole image screamed suburban happiness, but clearly, that wasn't enough for him. It made a sick kind of sense that he and Rose found each other, two people willing to destroy their marriages for some excitement. Contacting his wife was one of the hardest things I've done. I sent her a message explaining who I was, along with a video from Cabo and screenshots from Rose's group chat. At first, she accused me of trying to cause trouble, saying I must have edited the video. She told me about their 15-year marriage, their kids' college funds, the anniversary stuff. But as she looked through all the evidence, especially the dates that matched his business trips, everything started falling into place. The shock turned to anger, then to a quiet determination. A week later, she messaged me back, thanking me for showing her the truth about her marriage. She had already contacted a divorce lawyer and moved in with her sister. The aftermath of all this has been intense but satisfying. Both our marriages ended because two people couldn't stay faithful. The video of Evan falling into the pool somehow made its way onto several social media platforms, I can't confirm or deny my involvement in that. His company's HR department probably wasn't thrilled to see their regional sales manager getting pushed into a resort pool by an angry husband. I've heard through mutual friends that he moved to a different state after everything fell apart. As for Rose, she's staying with her sister while looking for an apartment, probably regretting how a few months of excitement cost her a stable marriage, our dream house, and most of her savings. The lesson here is simple, if you can't be faithful, don't get married. The truth always comes out in the end.